It is about 5.20 a.m. on December 18th. So set day for trapping, nine day Martin Fisher season. And uh, like I said, I've got my first set here. And inside there I got, uh, you can see a little bit of beaver pelt, some beaver fleshings, a um, little bit of fish and some sausage scrap. So kind of overkill on bait, but I've got it, so I might as well use it. And then I uh, just threw some sticks on the side, by a log, and then there's kind of a bunch of uh, mature oak and downed timber, which is exactly the kind of stuff fisher love to live and hunt in. And then uh, I got a trail cam set to watch if anything decides to come by. So uh, long day today, time to move on and get more sets made. And we got another set made. And this one is a 160. We got beaver, fish, and some pork scrap as bait. And uh, on this one, uh, I got the wood pan trigger. Makes it a little easier for things going in and out. Got Dulke as lure, which is a skunky scent. And uh, some beaver caster, and then just kind of looking around where I am in the uh, pines and kind of by some smaller brushy areas. So I like the spot. Haven't tried over here before, but we'll see how it goes. Well, that's two. I got 12 to go. No, 14. I got 16 total. 14 to go. Long day. All right, a little out of breath plowing through this stuff, but I'm in a beautiful black spruce bog here, which to me has always just screamed Martin Habitat, but uh, I'm yet to get one in here. But uh, I'm gonna make a set and uh, put a trail cam on it. And we'll go from there, but hopefully this is the year I connect, because Man, this is just so beautiful. I'd hate to give up this spot, but if I don't catch here, it doesn't do me good to sit here. So, I found a nice spot to set up. Followed some uh, fresh rabbit tracks, which is one of Martin's favorite foods. So if they're around, there should be Martin. Again, this area just always has looked fantastic for Martin, but I've just never connected with one. But I got uh, fish as bait, Magnum Martin as lure, a little bit of caster lure. Um, you can see hanging there, put a feather up just as a visual attractant if they do get close enough. And uh, game camera. So we'll see what happens. Alright, so I'm going to make a bobcat set here. So I got my box, I got the extended top. Because for 220, that's what you need to do to be legal in Minnesota. And I've got the top end propped up just a little bit, so it's easier for them to look straight in. And uh, now I've got to throw in some bait and uh, the trap. And again, I got a lot of uh, bait this year, so this is uh, excess scrap from when we made. Sausage this year, big ol' hunk of beaver, hunk of fish. So, a little bit of everything. This is beaver pelt. This is a little bit of pelt off a of possum, so just for some added eye appeal in there. Because they see furry in what kind of looks like a burrow, their natural instinct is to just pounce. So hopefully that's what will happen here. And we have Gusto. And this is some Milligan brand uh, Taos, Taos. Uh, just caster, beaver lure. 
So we're going to throw a little bit of these in the box. Just get a good smear onto the Diva pelt there. A little bit up high. Gusto, which again is just super skunky. A little bit up high. Get some in the box. Get the excess off on the fur there. And that's a 220 with a wood pan trigger, which again for Bobcat is essential. They're not going to just push their face into wire usually. So the wood pan opens it up a lot and uh, just makes them a lot more likely to put their head in there. Wire to the box. And uh, if this gets anything, I mean, they shouldn't go anywhere. But in the off chance they start moving, this is going to be like a 10 pound drag bringing the box around. So they won't get far if they do make it anywhere at all. And just some additional eye appeal. Got some feathers. Alright, so that is my bobcat set, and then I got a feather hanging up high, so anything coming down either way of the path, I'll be able to find the set. And there's rabbit tracks all over the place here, and it's real thick, so it should be a good spot for bobcat to be hunting. And another set ready. There's one of the uh, wire cages that I have, but uh, I've caught Martin in it before, so they work. And uh, real light and quick to take along, so convenient and a little easier than just building a natural cubby. But made out of hardware cloth. And same as the others, I got fish, beaver, some uh, pork scraps from making sausage, and some beaver pelt in there. And uh, I did Gusto and Caster for scent for this one. And just kind of the area that I'm in. Under some pines. Then just real thick. And some uh, rabbit and deer tracks around. So we'll see what happens. So we've got another bobcat set here. And I got a bunch of blood dripped around from the bait bag. Uh, same, just pleather of bait in there, and actually an entire uh, roadkill squirrel that I picked up. Um, and then I just hung a bunch of stuff, got the tractants, even got a little bit of foil hanging up there. But uh, this is where I had that miss with the bobcat last year, so high hopes for this spot. See what it does. I gotta get a move on here because I'm gonna run out of daylight, but uh, this is the location where a lot of my trail cam videos come from. So wolf, bobcat, fisher, martin, porcupine, everything comes through here. So should be a good spot. There's my box, got a feather hanging there, and uh, 
trail cam to watch. So hopefully something will come by anyway, but got to get going to use daylight. It's a uh, nine day season and the shortest week of the year, so. Got my spot for my next set here. Now this nice large tree that's uh, been burned on the inside. I don't know if it was a lightning strike or what caused that, but interesting feature. So kind of drew my eye to it. Seemed like a good area to put a set in. So I got my box set here, throw some bait in. And that's the same as I have been doing, so it's beaver meat, fish, and uh, pork scrap. So bait's in. Get the trap put in, and I've already got it ready to go. Box. Make sure I got safeties off. And I already have my wire ready, so I'll wire it to this tree. If anything gets caught, it's got nowhere to go. I actually prefer using silver wire over the standard trapping wire, which is usually covered in grease and pretty dark. I feel like the silver just blends into the snow better. And then we add our scents, our lures. So, just grab a stick. This is caster. So that we just want in the box. This is gusto, which is very stinky. I'm put some of that, a dab just on the very back of the box. get some a little up higher, smear it on the tree so the scent carries. farther into the box there. And that's it. The set is ready to go. Got another set done here. And uh, if you look down there, there's the creek. Got a feather hanging there. So there you can see the creek better. So right down here is where I got a fisher two years ago. I got a porcupine right around here last year. Um, and rather than going like kind of right above the creek where it had been, uh, I decided to stay up on the ridge um, because anything hunting the ridge might be more likely to find it. Uh, it's a little bit thicker up here, so animals, especially predators, tend to feel better about being in the thick stuff so they can ambush and then just being up higher, hopefully scent will disperse more. But I uh, gotta keep moving. I got two more sets to make uh, here. And then I'm going to do another couple at a different location, which those I'm sure will be in the dark, but I was kind of planning on that anyway, but 
Hopefully I can get these next two done here while it's still light out. Doing an early morning check. Been a couple days since I got my traps out here. And uh, this spot I got pretty high hopes for. Just a nice area. And uh, in the summer, I had a trail cam out and I actually got some fisher pictures on it. So I know they're in the area. And I'm near a pond, so uh, there's a chance of mink as well. And trap is still set. I don't see any fresh tracks. But again, it's only been a couple of days, but uh, yeah, I'll throw some pictures up of the fisher that was in the area. And then close to water, there could be mink. Um, I'm hoping it's cold enough the raccoons aren't out, not what I'm trying for. And then uh, fox and coyote are definitely around, but pretty rare that they stick their head in a con of bear, but it does happen. But uh, mostly I'm hoping for fisher, but we'll move on, keep checking. And our next set by this tree. Still set. Moving on. We got a deer bed here. One right back over there as well. Right by one of my boxes. So let's see if we got anything waiting on us. We do not. Beautiful area though. Nice day to be out. A little bit breezy, but that just carries scent. So, moving on. And another empty box. Seems to be a pattern. If I had to guess, I would say this is a porcupine trail. So I'm gonna look real quick, see if I can find where he's at, because these are pretty fresh tracks, so probably not too far from here, but uh, I'll update you. Well, I found the tree the porcupine had been in. I don't see him up here right now, but uh, I'll follow the trail the other direction real quick, see if he went to another nearby tree. Some more tracks here, and they went up this tree, and I didn't see him up there, but I didn't see any down tracks either. So I was just looking around in uh, the other nearby trees and I found them. Let's see if we can get a good look at this guy. Yep, if I can get my zoom to work here. There we go. That's a nice one. And he is a uh, pretty good size, I'd say bigger than the one that I shot last year. But uh, I got no reason to shoot this guy right now. Maybe if I end up not getting anything in trapping, I'll come find him to get some dinner out of it. But for now, he's just real cool. Glad I uh, spotted those tracks and found them. But uh, we'll let him do his thing, move on.
looking at what I assume to be fisher tracks right here. You know, they're doubled up in pairs. And they're about the size of a coyote track. And then they kind of spread out a little bit, but... Definitely not walking how I'd expect a coyote. So, and again, there they're doubled up, doubled up. So I think this is Fisher. It's going right down the trail, headed vaguely the right direction is uh, where I've got my set, but who knows. There they veered off, now these are just deer tracks. But they've been going quite a ways down the trail and kind of all over the place. So I might have to grab a box and move it farther up in the woods. I'm kind of far back with this box. But uh, this is an area that I'm just kind of prospecting. Um, other than seeing those tracks, I've had no uh, indication that there's actually a fissure here other than just that I'm far enough north and in the type of woods where I would expect them to be. Um, and so my wonderful, amazing wife uh, had a child, our first child, in November, so not quite two months old yet. And so uh, she's being the amazing woman she is and letting me still come trapping. Um, but to help reduce time that I'm gone, I'm uh, kind of prospecting a couple new spots that are closer to home. So I have my main line by the St. Louis River and then uh, a couple spots where I just threw a couple of boxes out that I figured could be good in the future. And so that's where I'm at now. And uh, we'll see once we get to the next box, but pretty sure those were fisher tracks, so confirmed that they're here. And uh, turn it back on when I get to the box. And that <laughs> is disappointing. So we have the tracks. You come around, come around, come around. Got his head all the way up there and uh, decided not to go in. But that's, yeah, definitely some fisher tracks but just did not commit. So, uh, gonna relure and hopefully in the next couple days he gets hungry, comes back. He knows there's food here now. But, uh, <laughs> dang. Tracks all over the place and just not in the box. And we got nothing and no tracks at this box. So we got our feather hanging here. Put out some new lure and keep on going. Might be a little bit hard to see, but those are the feather tips from a bird. So one was there and flew around and I just recently spooked up a spruce grouse. I saw it, stopped. I was gonna try and take my 22 out, but uh, even though I was kind of behind some brush when I stopped, it spooked and flew which uh, is kind of funny to me because the nickname for spruce grouse is fool sen because they're supposed to be really easy to approach and I've never had that be the case. But uh, anyway, recently saw a grouse, there's some wingtips, and then we got some real fresh <clears throat> wolf tracks here. So that's really cool. Always happy to see those. And uh, I always think it's funny because people complain when there's wolves that the deer are gone, which is kind of backwards, right? Because if there's wolves, there has to be deer, right? They need a food source. They wouldn't be there if there wasn't deer. So it's just funny to me. But uh, I don't know, I love having wolves around. I've seen them in person quite a few times, actually. And, uh, Actually, I had once I was deer hunting and used a little bleat call and first thing in the morning and I could hear something coming and 
see a little bit of fur right behind a bush about 20 yards away. So I bring the gun up thinking, gonna get my deer first thing in the morning, this is perfect. And uh, a wolf trotted out. And that was, you know, super cool. I'm just watching him, but then it was another wolf and another wolf and another wolf. And uh, a pack of probably at least 10 and uh, anywhere from about 50 yards away. Most were probably about 20, 30 yards away. And then there was one came within 10 feet of me. So I'm just sitting there on the ground and uh, he comes out and he can tell that something's not right. Like I look out of place, but I'm not moving so he can't tell what. So he just like stares me right in my face for a couple seconds, takes a couple steps, stares at me another couple seconds, and just keeps on going. One of the coolest experiences I've ever had. And, you know, at no point was I worried about my safety. Wolves want nothing to do with people. I mean, the other times I've seen them, the second they know you're there, they're gone. And I'm sure had I moved at all, that whole pack would have taken off the other direction. But super cool experience. Love being around and seeing wolves. And uh, Minnesota's got, I don't know, about two thirds of all wolves in the lower 48. So we have plenty. Uh, people talk about the possibility of hunting and trapping season. I'd have no issue with that as long as they manage it a little bit better than last time. I think a lower quota, but otherwise we have enough, it'd be sustainable. But uh, I love having them around, I definitely don't want them going anywhere. But uh, they also are kind of like people in that they like to take easiest way to point A to point B, so we got a little bit of fresh snow now, but I was through here breaking trail before, so now they're taking the trail, now that it got broken and made obvious, but really cool to see. And I'm sure this keeps going away, so I'll turn the camera off, but just wanted to show off some of these big ol' wolf tracks. And this... Looks to be a pair of wolves, I would guess. So, there's some footprints. This is overlooking a creek, and uh, I was coming down here, because last time I was crossing that log down there, um, I noticed some mink tracks, and you can kind of see the ice is broken right under the log. Mink like to travel between ice layers, um, so I was gonna put a set right there for a mink. While I'm walking down, these are bobcat tracks, so I may need to move one of my bobcat sets over here. So that's exciting. All right, so here's where the uh, ice broke. So I decided to put the set in here. Um, it'll still work as a mink set. And I specifically grabbed a trap with a pan on it because uh, the mink are a lot more likely to go over it, which is great because uh, it'll double as a bobcat trap. This is a 160, uh, so usually you want to use a 220 if you're going for bobcat, but they will go into a 160. So, uh, mink slash bobcat set right here on the creek. And then I got, you can see a feather there, a little bit of uh, fur hanging. So I got that in the creek, in case it comes down the creek. And then over here, I got my other bobcat box that nothing had visited yet, and moved it out here. So, put it out in the open so it's nice and visible. Uh, that's where the bobcat came. Up the creek, got some fur and stuff here, feathers. Uh, and then up there is where the bobcat originally came down from. So if it walks that edge, 
stomped down this area pretty good and threw some fur, should be pretty visible. So, two very close uh, sets, and hopefully one of them will pay off for us, but keep going. And we got all kinds of rabbit tracks. Oh, that is a bobcat. That is definitely a bobcat. Came and decided not to go in the box. But we got a trail cam right there, so hopefully we got some video of them. But, uh, dang, it's a good looking print. Probably a nice tom. But, just unwilling to go through, which, again, this is more for Fisher or Martin, um, so I don't have the wood pan on it, which might have invited the bobcat to go in a little more. Uh, so that's a little bit disappointing, but still cool to see. At least got it to the box, and hopefully on video. on my porcupine friend again. Hanging out doing his thing. Munching on a tree. Love these guys. Got some tracks going across the trail here. And another porcupine. Second one we've seen today. So, porcupines are out and happy. Cool. And I just spooked a uh, snowshoe hare at the last set. He took off. I was hoping he'd stop and I could maybe try and get a shot, but just kept going. But uh, seeing a lot of wildlife today, so that's nice. Early morning here, just starting to get light. Coming to one of our sets. And there's a little bit of snow on the ground, so we gotta see if there's any fresh tracks. Nope, we are still set. And I don't see any tracks. So, moving on. And we're coming up on the box here. Still set. Oh, we are still set. All right, coming to our next set here. That's overlooking the creek. And we are still set. Today is the final day of the season. So, uh, day after Christmas, December 26th. Uh, coming around taking traps down. And we got one. Looks like we got a real nice fisher here. Solid, but not 100%. It snowed last night, so I'm guessing it got caught. I mean, again, not totally frozen, so probably early yesterday would be my guess. Let's see if we can get it out of there. Well, gonna have to un unstrap it, but gorgeous animal. Get it out of there and show you guys, and trail cam. Hopefully we got some sweet footage of everything that happened here. But I'll get this uh, thrown up on the tripod and show you guys. All right, let's take a look at this fisher. And this is the same box that uh, the bobcat had come by, but again, I didn't have uh, like a pan or anything, so it wasn't really set up for bobcat. But uh, very happy to get a fisher. Uh, I've had him on camera here before, but uh, let's take a look. This one looks 
Really big. That is a very nice animal. We've got a perfect base of the neck catch, and uh, he's not 100% frozen, but you know, probably about 90%. So uh, I don't want to damage the fur. I'm going to leave the trap on so to show him to you in there. But he's really light brown, really grizzled compared to the last one I got. And he's got a big wide noggin, so I'm assuming it's a male. And yeah, really big feet, claws. Ooh, nice chest white patch, crotch white patch. Absolutely beautiful animal. Very, very happy to get this, especially after the one that refused our box that we saw at the other location. But uh, get a little closer here for you. Absolutely beautiful animal. Super happy about that. Super happy about that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Thank you, my friend. Now you can see them pretty good. And yeah, just beautiful, beautiful grizzled brown on the tail. And the underside is pretty dark black. Got a big noggin, so assuming it's a male. Definitely a predator, can see the nice teeth. Big paws and claws. And then I got a nice white patch on the chest and the crotch and yeah the underside is like black but super happy about that beautiful beautiful animal well you haul it in you gotta haul it out i got a couple more traps to grab but thing is getting heavy definitely gotta be in shape if you're gonna do a walking trap line the way I do it. Probably end up hauling at least 100 pounds of gear in and out when it's full. But uh, I don't know, I love it. It's just uh, a lot more intimate to me to do a walking trap line rather than do one driving or by snowmobile. And uh, there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it like that. But here in Minnesota, Fisher Martin season is only nine days long and it's a combined limit of two. So it doesn't do me good to cover a lot of area, put out a lot of traps. Odds are if I, you know, strung a snowmobile trail, I'd end up over my limit. So we do a walking line and uh, that way I'm a lot more selective about how many animals I can catch and I mean I just love being out in the woods so just uh, taken down but we got a fisher so super excited about that and we got short tail weasel really nice pelt on it not uh, not a bobcat or fisher but uh, Muscle it and nice looking one. Take it. All right, we got the last trap pulled and uh, we got nine boxes, nine wood boxes, two hardware cloth ones. There's our wonderful fisher, but uh, hauling a couple miles. Uh, luckily, not full all the way, picking up as I'm coming back, but. All the boxes, plus traps, plus my pack. Oh, I'm probably hauling 125, 150 pounds. So, be uh, excited when I see the car. We got a wild turkey, a couple of them, visiting me on the trail here. That's pretty cool. Zoom out a little, so I'm not quite so wobbly. I don't know where they 
the other one went, there was three, but uh, been following their tracks. So, uh, surprised I caught up to them and that they don't seem too concerned about me, but that's pretty dang cool. Walk up on some turkeys, can't do that too often. Alright, just came from back that way and very nearly out here and uh, just in time. Supposed to uh, start snowstorming tonight, be about four to nine inches, um, which is perfect because uh, it'll cover all my tracks and I got all my boxes pulled, there'll you know, be no evidence I was even in the woods, which is what you want when you're done. And, uh, just, again, thank you Forrest for providing and giving us the opportunity to take part in your ebb and flow. <laughs>